Hello, my name is Ixandu La Mendoza from Bachelor of Secondary Education, major in English. And for today, I will be discussing to you the two articles from the Code of Ethics for the Professional Teachers, which is the Article 8 and Article 9. So, without further ado, let's get it started. has the right and duty to determine the academic marks and the promotions of the learners, the subjects, or grade handles. Such determination shall be in accordance with generally accepted procedures of evaluations and measurement. In case of any complaint, teacher concern shall immediately take an appropriate action of serving due process. In this section, it explains that you as a teacher has the right to determine the academic marks of your student. And of course, the parents are not allowed to do that because the parents are not the one whose monitoring or giving assess on their children regarding on their performance and assessment. The only thing that their parents can do is to ask an advice on the corresponding advisors of their children or subject teachers regarding on their failing remarks or academic remarks of their children. Section 2. A teacher shall recognize that the interests and welfare of the learners are first and foremost concerned and shall deal justifiable and impartially with each of them. In this section, explain that once you become a teacher, you as a teacher have to consider each one of your students. You as a teacher must consider the number of students inside the classroom. Why? Because if you are a teacher, you should know your capacities or limitations in terms of handling your students inside the classroom. You as a teacher must give them advice if one of your students has been struggling about their grades or personal problems. You as a teacher must be there to listen and to help them on how they're going to solve those kinds of circumstances. Section 3 under no circumstances shall a teacher be prejudiced nor discriminated against by the learner. This section is a protection for the teacher from discriminations from the learners and of course from their co-teachers. Section 4. A teacher shall not accept favors or gifts from learners, their parents or other in their behalf in exchange of requested cohesions, especially if undeserved. In this section, it explains that you as a teacher must not accept favors or gifts from the learners or others in their behalf in exchange of requested cohesion. You as a teacher must be professionals on every actions you will make because in terms of complaining, you as a teacher must give your students instructions or procedures when they need to comply. Section 5. A teacher shall not accept directly or indirectly any remunerations from tutorials others what is authorized from such service. In this section, it explains that any tutorials or any tutorial service that has a payment are prohibited. Only remedial classes are allowed because remedial classes are only way to remunerate or to cope up on their particular subjects. Section 6. A teacher shall base the evaluations of the learner works only in the merits and the quality of academic performance. In this section, it explains that you as a teacher must evaluate your students based on their potentials and performance. You as a teacher should be transparent in terms of giving academic remarks of your students. Dapat hindi hula-hula yung pagbibigay ng grades sa mga estudyante. Section 8. A teacher shall not inflict corporal punishment on offending learners nor make deductions from their scholastic ratings as a punishment for acts which are clearly not manifestations for poor scholarship. In this section, it explains that ang isang teacher ay bawal na pong manakit ng isang estudyante. Bawal na rin pong mag-deduct or magbawas ng score base sa nagawa 
ng isang estudyante na hindi maganda sa isang guro. Section 9. A teacher shall ensure that conditions contribute to the maximum developments of the learners are adequate and shall extend needed assistance in preventing or solving learners' problems and difficulties. In this section, it explains that you as a teacher must encourage your student to develop and to showcase their full potential in terms of learning. And you as a teacher must be there to guide them or to help them when they need an assistance in preventing any problems and difficulties because it is part of your professions as a teacher to help them grow. Section 1. Every teacher shall establish and maintain cordial relations with parents and shall conduct himself to merit their confidence and respects. In this section, it explains that you as a teacher must develop or improve your interpersonal skill sa pakikipag-usap sa mga parents ng bawat estudyante. Kasi po, ang parents talaga ang may pinaka-concern sa mga anak nila. Section 2. Every teacher shall inform parents through proper authorities of the progress and deficiencies of learner and their team, exercising utmost candor and tact in pointing out learners' deficiencies and seeking parents' cooperation for the proper guidance and improvement of the learners. In this section, it explains the question kung paano mo ipapaalam sa parents na may problema ang isang estudyante sa isang subject. Siyempre, sa paraang formal, gaya ng pagbibigay ng call slip or consent. And of course, you as a teacher, of course, must give clear explanations regarding sa deficiency ng inyong estudyante. Nang gayon, magkaroon kayo ng paraan kung paano nyo ito gagampanan. Section 3 a teacher shall hear parents' complaints with sympathy and understanding and shall discourage unfair criticisms. In this section, it's explained that you as a teacher must hear the parents' complaints with sympathy and understanding because parents are the one who's the most concerned about their children. So you as a teacher must hear them and give them advice on how they going to solve or to handle those kinds of circumstances.